I dumped my Lenovo Legion Go for the shiny new Steam Deck OLED, and what I discovered was surprising. But before we get into my personal experience, let's dive into a quick overview of each device. The Lenovo Legion Go has a starting price of $699 with 512GB of storage and $749 with 1TB of storage unless you're lucky enough to find it on sale. The Steam Deck OLED starts at $549 for 512GB and $649 for the 1TB model. The Steam Deck OLED at face value may appear significantly cheaper than the Legion Go, but you have to consider that the Legion Go uses a much stronger chip and makes use of an 8.8-inch. 1600p 144hz IPS display versus the Steam Deck which uses a weaker chip and has an 800p 90hz OLED screen. Both have 16GB of LPDDR5 RAM and both come with very solid carrying cases. However, the deck has a 2-in-1 case which I really appreciate. The main thing above all else that separates each of these handhelds is the software. The Legion Go is running a full featured version of Windows 11 and the Steam Deck OLED is running Valve's custom Steam OS which is based on Linux. Each of these software choices have their pros and cons which make a huge difference in day-to-day -day usage. I will get into this more in depth later in the video, but considering the Legion Go has double the resolution, almost double the refresh rate, and double the power, that would mean that the Legion Go is twice as good as the Steam Deck, right? Well, in my personal experience with both devices, I've actually learned that things aren't that straightforward. The first thing that became immediately noticeable to me after switching to the Steam Deck OLED is how much lighter and more comfortable it is to hold. The Steam Deck's weight comes in at 640 grams and the Lenovo Legion Go weighs 854 grams. While the added heft on the Legion Go may feel more expensive at first, it quickly becomes very tiresome when you're holding it for long play sessions because the controllers really dig into the palms of your hands. I also have grown to appreciate the joystick and button orientation much better on the Steam Deck OLED. The joysticks are placed at the top of the device with the buttons and D-pad to the the right and left of each joystick. If I had to make a comparison, it would be to the Wii U gamepad, but despite how off-putting it appeared to me initially, it surprisingly felt completely natural to hold the moment I picked it up. The thumbsticks are also much more normal size than the Legion Go, which has smaller thumbsticks, and I do find them to be more comfortable as well. However, the Legion Go uses Hall Effect joysticks, so you will never have to worry about them drifting, which could be a huge deal breaker depending on who you ask. But the joysticks on the Steam Deck OLED are replaceable if need be. Side note, the Steam Deck OLED also just looks a lot more adult or less gamery in design, which in my opinion is preferable for using in public or on a plane or train or whatever you guys want to use with it. But I know that aesthetics are completely subjective, so you can completely ignore your session if you really don't care or you have a different preference, whatever. But less subjective are the features of each device. The Steam Deck OLED has two trackpads of haptic feedback and often makes maneuvering the UI very smooth and easy. The Legion Go also has a singular trackpad, however, it wasn't nearly as responsive, but I still appreciate that it had one because it made using Windows much easier. But the Dex trackpads, which I thought I would never actually use in the first place, quickly became a game changer for me. I find myself using these to navigate the UI and even sometimes as a D-pad in certain games. Heck, even the left one doubles as a scroll wheel in desktop mode, which makes browsing super easy. However, I can't help but feel the Legion Go got it right with including a built-in kickstand. While this is mainly due to the gimmick of being able to remove the controllers, I still believe the Steam Deck OLED could have greatly benefited from one, especially because I find playing shooters on device like this a bit awkward and difficult to aim without a keyboard or mouse or a real dedicated controller. The Legion Go's main selling point, however, is its detachable controllers, which is similar to how the Nintendo Switch works, with the right controller being capable of turning into a vertical mouse. While this is really cool, I don't find myself missing it as I barely used it outside of saying to a friend, dude, you gotta check this out, watch this. And it's definitely a feature I can live without and one that I don't miss since switching over to the Steam Deck. If I really wanted to, I could use a mouse on it, but... Wait, I would need a kickstand for that. Um, yeah, Valve, you you guys better have a kickstand next time around. Fingers crossed for the Steam Deck 2 kickstand. Now, let's talk about the elephant in the room, and that is the display of the Steam Deck OLED. As we discussed earlier, the deck uses an 800p OLED display capable of HDR 1000 nits, and that OLED display is immediately noticeable in games like Cyberpunk 2077, Elden Ring, and Doom Eternal, which make great use of HDR. But the real game changer here is the contrast paired of HDR. The OLED obliterates the Legion Go when it comes to contrast, and in some cases, makes a more dramatic difference than better graphic settings do. Originally, I thought that going from 1600p to 800p would be a dramatic change and would instantly make me regret my decision to switch to the Steam Deck OLED and I would be returning it immediately. But in reality, I barely noticed the difference and I promise you, it's not because I have bad eyes. I, I checked, I, I wear contacts guys, okay? I go to, I, I see an eye doctor. But I think this is mostly because the Legion Go has its best performance and battery life running at 800p 
key internally on the 1600p screen with some upscaling or stretching which didn't always really look the best to me. However, the smaller screen on the Steam Deck OLED helps a little with pixel density which makes the perceptual difference in resolution a little bit less dramatic than you'd think. While 1600p 144Hz is better than 800p 90Hz, it is rarely relevant considering the hardware limitations and cost of battery life. But if I had the Steam Deck OLED and Legion Go playing next to each other, would I notice the difference? Yes, but is the higher resolution display a game changer? In most games, no. Is native 1600p worth the battery life and performance sacrifice? On a handheld, not at all. However, I do find myself wishing for the higher resolution, higher refresh rate display from the Legion Go when I play indie titles. But the true blacks from the OLED screen and 90 hertz do more than enough to make me quickly forget about it. So with the Steam Deck OLED, you'll be getting half the resolution at 800p, but double the value with lower latency, true blacks, and HDR 1000. But now let's talk about software and user interface. As I stated earlier, the Steam Deck OLED using Linux over Windows has its pros and cons. One of the greatest advantages of using Linux and SteamOS instead of Windows is that the experience on SteamOS is console-like and that I can just pick up the Steam Deck OLED, tap the game I want to play, and not have to think too much about it. In my opinion, this is the ideal entry point into PC gaming for console gamers. SteamOS and Linux are also much better optimized for gaming and it allows the weaker chip in the Steam Deck to really shine through as there are very few games, as Digital Foundry puts it, that are too big for Steam Deck. However, using a Linux-based OS has its drawbacks as well, like the fact that you can't play Xbox Game Pass on here. While this isn't a huge issue for everyone, it is however a bit of a bummer because Game Pass has a massive library of games that I would love to test on the Steam Deck OLED but can't without purchasing each individual title on Steam. But not having Game Pass is not the end of the world, as you can also use tricks to get Epic Games, Ubisoft, EA, and other launchers to run on it. But if you are a fan of certain competitive shooters that implement anti-cheat, you might be SOL because I discovered quickly that certain anti-cheat platforms just don't work on Linux. This became clear to me when I tried to play Call of Duty on here and it wouldn't run. So yeah, not every game can run on the Steam Deck OLED. While the Legion Go can theoretically run everything, I still had to deal with Windows, which at times was a bit of a pain in the you know what. And with Windows, you also have to make sure that each of your individual drivers are all up to date, deal with bloatware, and updates that sometimes mess up files without any notice at all. So I really hope Windows comes out with an Xbox operating system similar to what Valve did with SteamOS. So finally, let's discuss the gaming experience on the Steam Deck OLED and how it has differed since switching over to it. To be completely honest, I've discovered that there are very few games that can run on the Legion Go that can't run on the Steam Deck solely because of power, and this is because of Valve's optimization, which only works on Linux or their custom operating system. And the performance gap really isn't that noticeable between the two devices when you're not comparing them directly side by side. Will you have to lower settings? Yes. But are the lower settings really that noticeable at 800p? Not really. Is the frame rate lower? Yeah, but you can lock it at any refresh rate between 30 and 90 FPS and call it a day. There are some frame drops in modern AAA games, but it's to be expected on a handheld that's running at 15 watts on a battery. But like I said earlier, pretty much any game with HDR properly implemented in it is going to look great on the deck OLED and in some cases blows me away at how much of a difference it can make. But darker games, especially like Resident Evil 4, really shine in the Steam Deck OLED and make me forget about the lower resolution, lower FPS, and lower settings because of the contrast and HDR implementation. In my opinion, this is the definitive handheld for horror games, at least for now. Plus, the battery on the Steam Deck OLED is the best I've experienced on a handheld this year. The amount of performance you are getting with the length of battery life is, quite frankly, amazing. The Steam Deck is still the king of 15 watt gaming, as the Legion Go tends to struggle at 15 watts in comparison. This is where the Steam Deck really separates itself for me. The whole point of having a handheld gaming device is to be able to play your video game library on the go, and the Steam Deck OLED allows you to do that for the longest amount of time. One area, however, where the Legion Go really shines over the Steam Deck OLED was with emulation. The 1600p display is amazing for Switch emulation, and I really do miss the Legion Go's display because of this. It's like having a souped up Nintendo Switch before it even comes out. However, the Steam Deck OLED can still emulate games perfectly, but you are stuck with 800p. But the lower res screen really doesn't matter for older games that might actually benefit from the OLED, especially those that are natively 4x3, due to the lack of a backlight. At the end of the day, choosing a handheld is challenging because each device has features I'd love to combine to my ideal gaming device. If I could, I'd take the HDR OLED, battery life and form factor from the Steam Deck, and I'd also take the power, screen resolution, and Hall Effect joysticks of the Legion Go to create a super handheld. But everyone seeks different things in their handheld gaming device, and you really can't go wrong with any of them.
But overall, what genuinely amazed me throughout this experience was how the decrease in performance transitioning from the Z1 Extreme in the Legion Go to a less powerful APU in the Steam Deck was almost imperceptible to me. I could tell there was a difference, but it quickly became irrelevant to me when I discovered all the other advantages the Steam Deck OLED has over it. The Steam Deck is more comfortable, it has a more console-like gaming experience, it has an amazing 800p 90Hz OLED display with true HDR, and most importantly, the best battery life I've had in a gaming handheld outside of maybe the Nintendo Switch, which I'm not even sure it even counts in this conversation. However, the Legion Go is a very good handheld in its own right when you consider that the display has the best specs I've seen in a handheld at 1600p, 144Hz, coupled with interesting features such as FPS mode, Windows if you prefer it, Xbox Game Pass, a more powerful chipset, and most importantly, a kickstand. But after using the Steam Deck OLED for two months, it definitely won me over as my daily driver for gaming handouts and is my number one recommended handheld at the moment. But we'll see if that changes very soon, with a growing number of competitive new handhelds slated to hit the open market this year. But in the meantime, if you enjoyed this video, leave a like and subscribe to see more content on upcoming handhelds and other new interesting gaming devices. And until then, this has been KillerCam1020. See you in the next one. Peace.